Here's a question for you. Let's say we're reacting zinc metal with aqueous copper 2 chloride. Will the reaction proceed or should we write no reaction? How do we tell? How do we find the answer to that question? Now there's something called the activity series which can help you to determine if a reaction will proceed or not in a single displacement reaction which is what we have here. Now you can look up the activity series in Google Images if you want a complete list, but I'm just going to give you some of the elements just so you can answer the questions in this video. Now you need to know that lithium is more reactive than sodium, which is more reactive than magnesium. And then you have aluminum, zinc, iron metal, nickel, hydrogen, copper, silver, and gold. Silver and gold are the least reactive noble metals. So make sure you understand that lithium is the most reactive and so reactivity increases towards the left and elements like silver and gold they are the least reactive. So now let's go back to the question that we're dealing with. How can we determine if there's going to be a reaction. How can we use the activity series to find the answer? You need to ask yourself a question. Can solid zinc metal displace the copper in the aqueous solution? Is zinc metal stronger than copper? And so looking at what we have, zinc is to the left of copper. And so we can say that zinc is stronger than copper. So the reaction will proceed. So now that we know that the reaction will work, how can we determine the products of the reaction? So this is a single displacement reaction. We have element A reacting with a compound, which we could say compound BC. A is zinc, B is copper, C is chlorine. And so what's going to happen is A is going to kick out B and pair up with C. So B is going to be by itself and A will be attached to C. So in this case, copper will be by itself. It's going to precipitate out of the solution as a solid and zinc is going to pair up with chlorine. Now, whenever you're writing an ionic compound, you need to make sure that the charges are balanced so that you can write the formula correctly. Zinc, as an ion, has a 2 plus charge. Chlorine has a minus 1 charge. So to balance the charges, we need two chloride ions to pair up with the zinc 2 plus ion. So the formula is going to be ZnCl2. And because it's soluble in water, we're going to write Aq. It's going to dissolve in water. It's going to be in the aqueous phase. Now let's try another example for the sake of practice. But let's react copper metal with iron 2 sulfate. Go ahead and try this problem. So using the activity series, will this reaction proceed as written? Will it work? Is copper strong enough to displace iron out of the solution? Now copper is to the right of iron metal. So therefore, we could say that copper is weaker than iron metal. So because it's weaker, it cannot displace iron metal out of the solution. So for this example, there's going to be no reaction. It will not work. Copper is less reactive than iron metal. And so that's how you can use the activity series to determine if a single replacement reaction will proceed as written or if there's going to be no reaction. Here's another example. Let's mix solid aluminum metal with aqueous hydrochloric acid. 
will the reaction proceed as written? So using the activity series, what would you say? Is it going to work or should we write no reaction? Is aluminum metal, is it strong enough to displace hydrogen out of the solution? So aluminum metal is to the left of hydrogen, so it's more reactive. So we could say that aluminum is stronger in terms of chemical reactivity relative to hydrogen. So yes, this will work. So aluminum is going to displace hydrogen. And so it's we're going to write it as a pure element. Now hydrogen, you don't want to write just H. It's a diatomic gas. So you need to write H2. And then aluminum is going to pair up with the chlorine. Now aluminum has a 3 plus charge as an ion. So we need three chloride ions to balance the positive three charge on the aluminum cation. So to write the formula, it's going to be AlCl3. And it's soluble, so we're going to write Aq. So that's how you can predict the products of a single replacement reaction. Now the next thing that we need to do is balance the chemical equation. So what coefficients can we write such that all of the atoms in this equation will be balanced? So right now we have three chlorine atoms on the right side, but only one on the left side. So that may indicate that we need to put a three in front of HCl. Let me use a different color. Now, if we do that, the number of hydrogen atoms will not be balanced. And to make it equal, we have three hydrogen atoms on the left. Right now, we only have two on the right. So what do you think we need to do? To make it equal, we need to use a fraction, 3 over 2. Because 3 over 2 times 2, the 2's will cancel, and you'll get 3. However, we don't want to deal with fractions when uh, writing the coefficients of a balance equation. We want to use whole numbers. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to double everything. So I'm going to start by putting a 6 in front of HCl. So now I have 6 hydrogen atoms. If you want to write it out, you can do it this way. So I currently have six hydrogen atoms on the left side, one aluminum atom on the left, and six chlorine atoms. On the right side, I have one aluminum atom, two hydrogen atoms, and three chlorine atoms. So I need to put a three in front of H2 such that I will now have six hydrogen atoms on both sides. Now the next thing I need to do is balance the chlorine atoms. I have six on the left, two on, I mean, three on the right, rather. So what I need to do is put a two in front of AlCl3. So this will now become six. And this changes to two. So I need to put a two in front of Al. And now everything is balanced. And so that's it for that example. Now let's talk about writing chemical reactions with halogens as it relates to single displacement reactions. So let's say if I'm reacting chlorine gas with aqueous sodium bromide. Will the reaction proceed as written? What would you say? Well, let's find out. For the halogens, you need to use a different activity series. You need to know that fluorine is the most reactive halogen. It's more reactive than chlorine, which is more reactive than bromine, and that's more reactive than iodine. So reactivity increases to the left. So using that particular activity series, can we say that chlorine 
is strong enough to displace the bromide ion out of the solution. A halogen will displace another halogen out of the solution if it's strong enough. But in the previous examples, we considered a metal displacing another metal out of the solution, with the exception of hydrogen, of course. So using this uh, activity series, we can see that chlorine is stronger than bromine. So this reaction will work. So what's going to happen is chlorine is going to kick out bromine out of the solution, and it's going to pair up with sodium. So we're going to get elemental bromine, which is in a liquid state at room temperature. And sodium is going to pair up with chlorine. Now, sodium has a positive one charge. Chlorine has a negative one charge. So the charges are balanced in a one-to-one -one ratio. Thus, the chemical formula is simply NaCl. And that is soluble. So we're going to write AQ. To balance the chemical equation, all we need to do is put a 2 in front of NaCl and in front of NaBr. And it's going to be balanced. Now, I'm going to try one more example, the final one for this video. So let's react solid iodine with aqueous sodium chloride. Go ahead and predict the product of this reaction, or rather the products. So iodine, is it strong enough to displace the chloride ion out of the solution. Now, iodine is on the right side. It's less reactive than chlorine. So because it's weaker, this reaction will not proceed as written. So therefore, our answer is simply no reaction. Iodine is not reactive enough to displace the chloride out of the solution. It's not going to work. And so hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of how to determine if a reaction will proceed when dealing with single replacement reactions. And so that's all you need to do. You need to use the activity series. So thanks again for watching. And if you like this video, feel free to subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to check out my chemistry video playlist. I'm going to put some links in the description. And thanks for watching.